a book about my brother to an own voice an own voices experience you know this is a book that i wrote about adhd and i also have it i worked into the story after the facts and the main character is based on me having some of those things in the background because i wanted it to be able to lead into a sequel um about me having you know use some of my own experiences to, to feed the story a little bit better Today, I'm excited to welcome in Samantha Edwards. Samantha is an author, comic artist, and children's librarian. She received a BFA in drawing from the University of Missouri in 2015 and a master's in library and information science from San Jose State University in 2018. Samantha was diagnosed with ADHD as an adult, and her debut graphic novel, A Tale as Tall as Jacob, was based on her own experiences growing up with her little brother, Jacob, who was diagnosed in childhood. So super interesting. Samantha, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yes. Samantha and I grew up together. So uh, we have known each other since the early school bus days. So I have been so excited to watch your journey here, uh, becoming a published author. How has the author, official author, published author life been treating you? (laughs) Um, so, okay, this is, it's so funny because I saw another author, Jen Wang, one time and she talked about how she worked so hard to become an author. And then she said, and I thought everything would change when that finally happened. And then it didn't. And I thought, oh no, I hope it's not like that. But it's true. It's honestly like your life is pretty much the same. It's just a little bit of extra work on the side. (laughs) For sure. Uh, Has it been more work than you anticipated? Like the post launch stuff? Uh yeah, honestly, like the, a lot of the marketing things, I'm I'm not like very good at using social media and putting myself out there and um, being on top of like posting every, you know, so often I keep missing important anniversaries for the book. Like, oh, it's been one year since it's been out. I keep forgetting to do stuff like that. So um, hopefully I'll do a better job for the next one. But this first one, I, I was just winging it. I didn't know what I was doing. So we'll see. I mean, how how could you? They don't exactly teach this in school. <laughs> no, there are no resources for that. Yeah. Figure it out. So how does that work? Because I, I know literally nothing about this. You have a publisher, right? Are they involved? Are there like different partnerships with publishers? Like are they involved with the marketing or does it all fall on your shoulders? Yeah. So it depends a lot on the publisher and how much um, money they have and how big their marketing department is how uh, popular they think the book's going to be. So all those things play into how much, how many resources go into the marketing. Um, So I got published through Andrews McNeil, which is, they're a local publishing house here in Kansas City. Their headquarters is here, but they publish um, national, internationally. So um, they do a lot of like syndicated uh, publishing in newspapers. So think like Peanuts, Calvin and Hobbes, like that kind of thing. And then um, they also do a children's book part um because they are a smaller independent publishing house and their kind of children's department is somewhat newer compared to other ones their marketing team is a little smaller a little scrappier um so they tend to reach out a lot to um it seems like they tend to reach out to uh illustrators who already have a following on social media and they kind of publish their work and use that as a platform for getting um book sales but it kind of went out on a limb for me. Like, I don't have a social media following or anything. And um, But the editor I work with is amazing, Lucas. And he um, uh, really pushed to get this book published. So I have used social media on my own a little bit. But I don't really have a huge platform. Um, but they have done some marketing thanks to some good book reviews that it got. I got a few starred reviews. And then um, it's also been it won an award. And it's also uh has been nominated for a few like state library awards as well so that's really helped them be able to justify like okay now we can put the money into this marketing so it just it really depends on the book and how it's received Mm -hmm. that's so interesting uh are books like like i know like with music it almost seems like the song has to hit right away or else it's not going to is the books have a longer no pun intended shelf life and like they can take off a year or two down the road as the marketing picks up yeah absolutely um Some books can definitely like emerge on the scene as a bestseller already, but uh, you can have a slow burn for sure because a lot of the awards and lists that get your book put on bookshelves and get them bought by bookstores um, can be a year or two later that those things come through. So it really just depends. If you have like, I I had two really good reviews from Kirkus and School Library Journal 
But even that, like having that ahead of the book launch, the book sales have been like just kind of, it's like a steady build. So um, I think the award circuit is really where book sales will bump. Yeah, for sure. Did you have like goals or say uh, numbers you wanted to hit or was it like, let's just get this book out there and try this and see how it feels kind of thing? Uh, Yeah, I had no like, I want to be a bestseller. No, I I just wanted to make it. Um, I started making it for fun. So I got to finish it, which is great. And it got put out in the world. And I thought, if I didn't even know if people would like it. I, you get so close to something that it's like, you don't even know if it's good or not. You know, you put it out there and, um, Andrews and Neils, they're very hands off. They kind of just let me do what I wanted to do. They very much let the creator create what they want. They don't do a ton of like editing or messing around with it. So I had no idea what was going to happen. I don't know. I thought, I don't know. I hope, I hope people like it. I tends to sort of gotten good review. Like people seem to like it. Oh. It has 4.9 stars on Amazon, so just, you know, I know you wouldn't say that, but <laughs> um, so does that feel really vulnerable? Like, if you started making this as kind of just like art, basically, and then now it becomes something you're intending to put out into the world, what's that yeah. process like to, like, get comfortable with putting yourself out there like that? Yeah, it's terrifying. And not even just making art, but making art based on your own life and, like, sharing these like intimate things about your family and like your insecurities and the stupid things you did as a kid like it's terrifying um and it's nice how many people are so kind about it and tell me how wonderful it was but then there are you know some negative reviews out there like on goodreads and i had i had been told don't don't read goodreads just don't do it every single author like just don't do it there will always be some people out there who just find something horrible about your book like it's inevitable. And I thought, ah, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I can handle criticism. But it's true. Like, I, I had to be like, I cannot get on Goodread and read the reviews because it it feels like like they're attacking you personally. And what be like, guys, I just done myself. But you have to remember, you, not everyone's going to be happy. Um, you know, you just have to put yourself out there and hope that enough people like it that it drowns out any negative feedback. For sure. Yeah. What did your family think of this and, and your brother specifically? Was, was it? a cool thing that they were going to be featured in this book or was there a little like trepidation of, around it? No, they love it. So this whole idea for this book actually started because my mom is like an incredible storyteller. She's really creative. It's kind of where I feel like I got some of my storytelling tendencies. And um, she had written a picture book about Jacob. That was just a really simple little thing. And in high school, I um, knew I wanted to go into illustration and I had illustrated the book because I liked it so much and thought it was so funny. And that was kind of my first like practice dive into book illustration. And then for years in college, I kind of forgot about the project until um, I was in library school and I started reading other graphic novels that were written for like a middle grade audience. And I thought about, you know, like this is something that I could do. I love comics and I'm an illustrator. And I started thinking about that picture book that my mom wrote. And I thought that would be such like expanded into a, a graphic novel. It would be so great. And so, you know, I think my mom had in her head thought like this could be a book. So she already knew like this family story could be out there and be read by people. Um, and my family, and they're like all storytellers. Like whenever we all get together, it's always just rehashing things that have happened before a million times, um, which is the reason the book is called The Tales Hall of Jacob because he's like this tall tale in our family. Like we are always telling stories about him. So and I think Jacob likes that too. He likes that he's this like mythical figure that we've all like built up as this like Paul Bunyan type of person. <laughs> um, and so uh, he's an adult now. He doesn't have all of the hyperactive things that he had when he was a kid. But um, I finally saw him after I published it and he read it. And it's like, what do you think? And he crossed his arms and he goes, you took some liberties. But then he gave me like this big hug and I was like, oh, okay, he's good. And he likes it. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So your adulthood ADHD diagnosis is such an interesting turn of events here. Mm -hmm. What Did that surprise you? And were you already in the process of writing the book when you got that diagnosis? What was that timeline like? Yeah. So I, you know, I grew up in a house with ADHD. And so in my mind, my brother's symptoms and the way that he acted, that was the way ADHD was. And honestly, like as a kid, I didn't even think about it that way. I just 
that like my brother has a lot of you know special needs he's very hyper like it's the way he is and i didn't really know that there was this whole like movement for adhd education and acceptance and all these things until i started making this book because in my mind i was just telling a story about me and my brother like, we had this unique relationship and he did a lot of funny stuff i was not coming at this from like a adhd awareness or you know that kind of perspective at all um and so when i started writing the book i started researching adhd to make sure that i was you know accurate in how i presented it especially for the time that the book takes place is the early 2000s and there wasn't as much information about things and as I was researching it and getting exposed to all these things, um, I started learning about symptoms for um, an attentive type of ADHD, which is different than my brother who had very much the impulsive hyperactive type that you think of when you think of ADHD. And not only the inattentive symptoms, but also like how different they can be in girls. Um, and I started connecting the dots and then um, also just how much I struggled in college and in uh making the book i mean making that book was like dragging my face across hot cement it was like so hard to make myself sit down and work and like be consistent in my schedule and i started realizing like oh this is actually something i struggle with that's not something i noticed as much in grade school because i liked school and so it wasn't like pulling teeth to make me go to school or to do my homework um but it definitely was a, a rocky road at times and then as an adult it was just really really apparent in my work setting, in my school setting, like in my personal life, my inability to keep my house clean, to keep my things organized, to pay bills on time. Like, so yeah, it just, um, it all hit me like, wow, I had never even knew this about myself. I always just thought Jacob's type was the only type. And so it was very eye opening. Mm -hmm. uh, again, with it being just such a personal book and then taking it, it's about your family. And then now all of a sudden, really, it's about you too. Mm -hmm. So, how did that change like your approach to writing and your approach to marketing and everything with the book? Yeah, it went from a story of, oh, this is about my brother who has ADHD to a, um, I don't know if you're pretty familiar with like the book industry, but like the, the hashtag own voices where an author is writing about their own lived experiences. It went from a book about my brother to an owned voice, an own voices experience. You know, this is a book that I wrote about ADHD and I also have it. So I was able to kind of like realize what was going on with me and kind of put that more into the book. Um, so I started actually, and I worked into the story after the facts, um, the main character is based on me having some of those things in the background because I wanted it to be able to lead into a sequel um, about me having, you know, ADHD and, and struggles with that. So um, I was able to kind of go back in and weave it in and, uh, use some of my own experiences to, to feed the story a little bit better that's so cool and that was one of my questions a sequel so have you started yet i have yeah and um, i officially like signed my contract and um so i started working on a sequel and i'll be able to like announce announce it soon but it's it's really new so i'm excited congrats that's amazing is the writing process easier now that you are aware of your diagnosis yeah because i'm actually being treated for it now so uh, I'm using like medication as a treatment and it's been just absolutely life-changing. Like my quality of life has gotten so much better. So I can sit down and just work when I need to. It's like all those barriers are gone. That's so amazing. So would you use the word fun to describe the writing process yet or st even no? Or yeah? Yeah. Oh, I love the storytelling part. So I, I wouldn't call myself a writer. I don't really use words um, because most of my planning happens as drawing sketching um so i like thumbnailing and sketching out the book and then i i'm like making room for the the bubbles because i know what's going to be said in them but i don't really know exactly what's going to be said in them but it's like thinking like a movie with the sound turned off um i know what's going to happen in each scene and then my last step is actually like what exactly goes into these bubbles um I see. so my writing process is just like really fun fast sketching which is what i love the most and then the hard part is after the sketching is done, the process heavy part is like in tracing it all with the inking process and then scanning it and coloring the whole thing. That was tedious and really difficult and took a lot out of me when I did it. So right now I'm having fun. I'm not looking forward to when I'm done with the, the drawing and writing part because the inking part is rough. 
you'll have to t- maybe time that with the like weather cycle in Kansas City, like when it sucks to be outside anyways. So like you might as well just stay in and get it done. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's so awesome. So what has been the most rewarding part of this whole process and having your book out in the world? Um, It's definitely been getting to visit classrooms and seeing kids, talking to them. Um, Since I'm a children's librarian, it's my bread and butter is talking to kids and, you know, listening to them and asking them what they like. So getting to do that, but with my own work is the most amazing, rewarding thing. Um, I didn't realize how much I would love it. I, I'm a nervous public speaker. I don't enjoy getting up in front of a group, but I, but every single time I get up in front of the class, no matter how nervous I am afterwards, I, I just am so happy and feel so energized and I love it so much. Um, and hearing kids, you know, as I'm giving my presentations and talking to them about my book, raising their hands saying, I have a brother just like Jacob, or I have ADHD and just like sharing that with me. And it's just, it's an amazing experience. I love, I just love hearing everything they have to say. Does it kind of, because I'm remembering child Samantha as I'm picturing this, and does it kind of take you back to like what that would have been like for you to like look someone in the eyes and be like, oh, they are doing what I want to do. And it's like a real thing. Like, that's so cool. And you're the person now. (laughs) I don't think I ever got to meet an author when I was a kid. Um, But I, I do remember in like first or second grade, a teacher read us No David by David Shannon. And that was the first time I saw a book where I was like, oh there are other kids like Jacob. Whoa. And I remember that being a big moment for me, but I never got to meet an author and like t- like ask them questions until I was an adult. And so I think it would have been a big deal. So I hope I hope it's a big deal for them. Yeah, so cool. Is there a big um, author community in Kansas City? Like are there groups that you're involved with of other local authors or how do you guys connect and support each other? Um, So there's not a big group in Kansas City. I mean, there... I think there's like a somewhat large group of like self-published authors. A lot of them more do like chapter books, um, picture books. But I have yet to find specifically like a middle grade graphic novel group. I've um, recently stumbled upon, um, oh gosh, what's the name of the website? Kids Comics United. It's like a national, like, forum for people who specifically make graphic novels and comics for kids so that's been just like amazing because it's such a niche thing and it's a newer type of book so it's hard to find people who do the same thing so i i had been in um like a book rating group before i got published and th- they would say like oh we love your pictures though we don't really know how to like critique a graphic novel because it's so different than a text-based book or a picture book so um, that was really difficult, and I'm still struggling with that now. It's not really having much of a community. Uh, I do know other illustrators that I can talk to because, you know, illustration, whether it's picture books or graphic novels, is still a pretty similar process. Um, and I've met a few other comic book artists, but they tend to do more like adult superhero or um, like like uh, adult comic strip type of thing. So still like not quite what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it's been an interesting process trying to find other people but I recently was able to go to a children's book literature festival and meet other middle grade authors who are published um and get to talk to them and like pick their brains about how they you know make a living off of of being an author and you know how to navigate the book industry and how to navigate um booking author presentations and all these things that there's no book or blog out there that I go find that tells you this stuff so it was just like a gold mine of information it was amazing oh that's so cool yeah. and so tell me about your day job you work for Kansas City Public Library is that right yeah. and how does how how did you have like synergy between your mm-hmm. side hustle and your day job what's that like for you oh I love it I I um, knew when I finished art school that I was not going to be able to go and do some like corporate art graphic design type of job because I am a very selfish artist. I only like to make art for me. Like, I don't want to do it for anyone else. Oh. And so I knew I had to pick something that would complement what I wanted to do. And so for a while, I thought, oh, art teacher. But the school setting is very, like, structured and rigid. And I didn't know, really, if I'd be able to dig into what I like. And so I kind of stumbled into public libraries and librarianship. And it's just been, like, like best marriage of two things and um 
I get to like build programming for kids and thankfully they're very interested in comic books right now. It's a big and um, high interest topic for kids. So I have like a comic book club where kids can come and we just hang out and draw and we make like little comic books. I also was able to um, win a grant through the American Library Association called the Will Eisner Foundation um, Comic Book Growth Grant. And so that basically a lot like gave me money to like build up comic book programming at the library as well. And I think part of why I was able to get that was because I was, you know, I'm a comic book artist and so I can really make this like work. Um, so it's been good. I, I, I love being able to share, uh, you know, my art skills with the kids and uh, like a very, it's a very laid back informal, not like a school setting. Like they come in, they get to choose what they want to do. And I just facilitate it. It's awesome. So cool. So is that just specifically at your branch or is that throughout the entire library system? That's just at my branch. Um, I've done a little bit of system-wide stuff. So back during the pandemic, I did a comic book drawing course online for our YouTube channel. And then, you know, I've had a few like like moments where I've gotten to do like workshops or um, art for the library. But mostly it's just at my branch. Um, no. Um, I'm a library girly too. I, I'm a regular there. I love the library and all your books that you read every month. <laughs> so many. And I'm always returning them late. And I'm like, you know what? That's just me contributing to the library system. I, yeah. I gladly pay my fines. But what's your library plug? For people that like have never thought, oh, I like what what would I even do at a library as an adult? Oh my god. Like what like just like give us the the commercial for public libraries. Oh, in the spot. Uh, one, <laughs> every single thing pretty much is free at the library, which is amazing. Um, even like you say, you pay fines and you get, like most libraries now are just getting rid of their overdue fees. Like just turn it back in. It's fine. It's okay. We all turn things in late, right? Um, everything is free. Everything we do is built around this idea that we want to empower people to be part of their community. And we want people to feel like plugged into not just like information and books, but um, the people around them and the organizations around them. And, you know, even if you don't need the like more fundamental library services, like free computer access or like just a cool or warm place to be during the day because you don't have a home, um, you're still supporting that by using the library and checking out books. Um, we have free audiobooks. So if you pay for Audible, like don't do that. You can literally get a library card our system, Jones and Carey system, Midcontinent system, plug them all into this like two apps and you have pretty much any book you could ever want for free. Um, there's just no reason not to use the library, you know? It's like endless, yeah. endless resources Anything that people have. Like classes, I mean, maker spaces, uh, art galleries, like it's all there. It's amazing. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay. So this is a question I ask everyone that comes on the podcast is what is a great meal you've had recently in Kansas City? Mm. Like you went out to dinner and it was just like blew you away and everyone has to try oh, it. I am a big foodie. I'm constantly, I spend way too much money on, on food. I love to eat. So I'm like, it's not so much of, I can't remember the last thing. It's like, which one do I pick? Um, <laughs> I recently, one of my favorite spots every single time I just like can't believe how delicious it is. It's, Sauced Casey in the Crossroads. Have you ever been there? I haven't. Okay. It's in like a little food truck that's permanently in this courtyard behind, um, I would say it's Academy Bank, but I can't remember, um, off of 19th Street. So you're like, you must have to like know where it's at. It's in this little area and it's only outdoor seating, but I mean, the best burgers and chicken tenders is like super, super good. Um, what else? Um, I recently had an amazing uh, meal at, one of my go-to favorites is Rye Casey on the Plaza. I love Rye. It's just like a solid place to go. Oh gosh, you're so nimble. I could go on and on and on. I know. We have Kansas City is such a slept on food scene. Like we have such good quality food here. And people just think it's just barbecue, but it's so not. Yeah. Oh, oh like every time I know a little food frog, I don't want to die. It's so good. Um yeah. yeah. I could just go on and on and on. I could like pull my eye and go through every single thing. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. I'm going to try sauce for sure, and I'll report back. And speaking of your Instagram, where can people find you? Where can they learn more about your book, about you, uh, all that good stuff? Um, so my Instagram is illustrious underscore Samantha. And from there, I have like a link tree thing in there. And you can get to my website, where to order my book. Um, if possible, always, you know, buy the book from an independent bookstore if you can. Um, or check it out from the library. It's there at the library. And every time I mean, you think like, oh, I'm not giving you my money if I get it from the library. 
But every time you check out a book in the library, it wears it down. Eventually, it'll get replaced, and so another book will get bought. Some point. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just read it a lot. Where wear it yeah. at? <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on here. This has been so interesting. I feel like I learned a lot today. And congratulations. Like, seriously, so, so cool. And I can't wait to see the sequel whenever I hear the official announcement whenever the time comes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. For All me. right. Amazing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you again next time, guys. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us today. If we haven't already, let's connect. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and TikTok at Rach the Realtor KC. We're back right here every Thursday morning with a new guest on Connecting KC. See you next time.